Well, let's speak to two people with um, very different accents who may or may not have changed them in the course of their work. Apprentice contestant Michaela Wayne, very proud of your Bolton Lancashire yeah, accent. Uh, former Royal Butler Grant Harold. Morning. Do you still have the same accent that you grew up with, Grant? Be I, honest. I think it's slightly changed. Um, friends tell me I don't sound Glaswegian anymore. Uh, and people think I'm from Edinburgh, which I take as a compliment because Edinburgh is seen as being posh. What's wrong with coming from Glasgow? I, I love Glasgow. I mean, it's, it was, uh, Airdrie was my home. I'm very proud of it. But the accent was, was causing me problems when I was younger. What sort of problems? Um, the pronunciation of words. I would speak very quickly. I would use um, words that other people wouldn't understand. And, and, you know, when you talk about the, the, the wife or things, people think I was referring to a missus where it's, I'm speaking about another lady or you can. These kind of words, people just didn't understand them. So I, I mellowed the accent. I had some um, lessons and, and how to pronounce words and how to speak better. Um, because of what I do, I have to. So that's wow. particularly for your job. I mean, it's this was had you always planned to go into service of some sort? Um, yes, from a young age, I, I knew that I'd go into butlering or I wanted to go into media, one or the other. And were you and advised that your accent was going to hold you back? Uh, I knew, by the palace. I knew no, not by the palace, but I knew um, that it was going to hold me back because um, when I was trying to get a job the first time round and I was picking up the phone, people were struggling to understand me, and I realised there was going to be a problem. But Kayla, <laughs> that's a different thing, isn't it? Being understood across the whole country yeah. versus being judged. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I don't think anybody in this day and age should be sending out a message that you have to change anything fundamentally about your own personal character. You wouldn't ask somebody to change the way they look or any of the rest of it. So why would you ask somebody to change their accent? I agree with um, with what Grant's saying with regards to using slang. You know, people won't understand certain words that you use. But again, I wouldn't take that necessarily out of what I'm saying. I would just explain what it means because I am the person who I am. And I, th I think people find that um, endearing as well when you've got a bit character to, you, to your accent. But when you're on The Apprentice, though, didn't Lord Sugar struggle with your accent at one point? No, he, he did once ask me to speak slower. I have a tendency to talk fast, and I think if you do have a thick accent, then, you know, you, you do have so to... So then you did have to... But I mean, I think he... I that think isn't it, changing I, I think he said, though, if I can't just... understand you, then the people won't understand then the you. Nation the won't, nation won't. The nation won't. And, and, I mean... <laughs> Well, people in Bolton would have actually so. but it, Yeah, of course. But interestingly, you then had to temper that. You had to temper the speed with which you spoke at, the strength of your accent. No, 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 no. But I, at no point did I um, Change. dress up my accent or, or whatever. It, it, my accent is what it is. Mm. But I will speak slower so people can perhaps understand mm. me better. But that isn't changing your accent. Or Grant, do you, you I, I think... do you judge people on their accents? <sighs> I think the problem is uh, we, we all judge. That's the reality. I mean, and to be, to be frank, with, sitting here, do you judge the w Michaela on the way we, she we speaks? We probably judge each other, actually, with our accents. But I think you is do. That a yes, you yes I think I think, you, I think you have a I think, lovely accent, actually. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you still got a bit more of it, because I've never heard you speak before. When I heard you change your accent, I thought, more fooling. You know, but she never has to change it herself I think, to fit in. I think the thing is, you, you so have to... So she judges you as a fool. How do you judge her? <laughs> well, I think the thing is, what she's saying is, when she says, you know, you don't have to press anyone, you do have to impress, because when you go for a job or a job interview, you're going to put on your best suit, you're going to have your hair cut, you're going no, to look tidy... No, but these are things that you, you choose you speak, to change about yourself. Correctly. Your accent is something that you're born with, just as... nobody. What if somebody didn't like blue eyes? Would you go and get your eyes changed to brown? Wear contact lenses? Oh, if they didn't like big would. noses, would you get a small nod? No, you... I, I mean, I, I feel sorry for you. To, I think if you want to give that impression, if you wanted to make a good impression, you're going to do what, what's What's but interestingly, the world of business and what we watch with the apprentices, that Lord Sugar wants everybody to do whatever they need to do to get the best deal that they can possibly get to make the most money, to be the most successful and apprentice. And isn't going to but, change But hold on, that. but if, if <laughs> what, what we're just talking about there is actually if, if you know, you've got to deliver something and actually your accent's getting in the way, wouldn't you do what you need to do to make sure you get that deal over the line? I don't think an accent would ever get in the way of a deal. So, I, I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, but I think it's... I think all this is nonsense. <laughs> I don't think anybody with an accent... The majority of the country has got strong, different accents. It's what makes Britain great and diverse. So, Quite And right. that's what we, you know, we... But you disagree, though. No, no I, I think it definitely affects you in, in life. And, in fact, I've even heard that in, in the Midlands, there's, there's schools that are actually teaching the children to drop the slang in order to improve their life. So they Are they going to start teaching like, women as well then that they can't work in construction as I do? These are, these are points that was made in the 1800s back in the day. This should not be relevant at all. It's Actually, to, this morning we've been talking about the fact that weather forecasters are being asked to introduce more local more variation. More local Yeah, more slang into for their rain. forecasts. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, need, so I think we need to have a word with them actually on that. <laughs> lots of people getting in touch. Jane says, I grew up in Norfolk. I continuously dropped that accent to speak the Queen 
Queen's English for my roles in IT, physics and nanotechnology sales. I have a small window to make an impression. They need to be focused on what I'm saying, not judging how I'm saying it. And then Kim says, I'm proud of my Geordie accent. I would never change it for anyone.